Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher. I'm Robin Harden. Today's program is all about dreams that have already come true. Barbie Taylor was warned about an accident that may happen on a country road. Then she had the dream, and then after the dream, she has an actual accident there, but she and her son are unhurt. And then Steve Wheelie, he shares a dream that foretold and confirmed his call to start a ministry for widowers. Check it out. It was one of those dreams that's all, you know, it goes from one scene to another, kind of jumbled up, and, and they don't seem to connect. And I can't even remember how it started out, although I was with Tom, actually, and another soldier going some, another soldier from the Salvation Army named Andrew. And, and we were someplace, and, and it seemed like we were, we were wearing robes or something like, something different, something out of character okay. for, for, for what we normally do. Okay. Well, then it changed where I was like, in a big room with a lot of other people and there was like some guy and I don't know what faith or whatever it's supposed to be but there was a guy going around touching people on the head and saying you know as as a priest I forgive your you know representative I forgive your sins mm -hmm. and I thought well, you can't forgive my sins mm -hmm. God's forgiven my sins you know Jesus died for my sins mm -hmm. and, and that was kind of an, another section of it and then then it went into another you know kept jumping from thing to thing and, and this was the part it was most interesting we were I was with some people again in some kind of like a grotto or something like that way I can describe it and it was like a pool of water below us and there was a guy that had a fishing pole and he, he was trying to catch a, a real rudimentary one too you know like some fancy thing but just something almost like a kid's toy fishing pole and he was trying to catch a fish down in this pool below us and he tried and he would hook it and get away and, and kind of jumped to another and I said well let me try it and I, I put the pole down and, and hooked it right away and pulled the fish up and it was a, a, a catfish about this big and we put it down on the, like a table of the ground and when we put it down it shrank down into like a flat piece like a paper like an artificial fish and we thought well that's that's strange, you know, we went from being a living fish into this representation of a fish. Mm -hmm. And so we put it back in the water and it became a, a living fish again. Mm -hmm. But the, after I woke up, the part that struck me was my nickname is on a, on a, a group I'm in, a, a Christian group on the internet is, is one guy nicknamed me Catfish because I'm from Tennessee and, and, I'm, and I'm slippery in his opinion and trying when we argue about theological things he can never pin me down mm, mm. <laughs> so that, that was it <laughs> this is exciting yeah. the first part is you know you have uh, it's you and some people in ministry right and you're going out, but you're in different clothing that is different than what you're used to. Right. In the Bible, remember Elijah left his mantle to mm. Elisha. It's mm. a mantle. It's an anointing. Okay. Right. So God is getting ready to move you out into ministry that's different than what you're used to. Well, maybe it is my new ministry. It could very yeah. well be. That, right. Oh, that's right. You do have a new right. ministry. Mm -hmm. It's different than what you're used to. And you're one of the leaders in it because, mm -hmm. you know, you all were the ones going out. Mm -hmm. Um you're going to hear people, you're going to encounter people of different faiths, of different um, doctrinal ideas, and, and so you're going to be able to um, reach people that are, you know, different than what, mm -hmm. not just people with your same faith base, right. and you know, so. Right. And that's so what this ministry will be, too, because it's open to everybody. Well, and you saw that in the dream with the guy talking about something that didn't ring true to you, mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to in love, help the redirect, and and that was one of the things about the fish. Someone's trying to catch a fish, and he's not able to, but you were able to. And part of that is because you're, because God has called you to this um, with this new mantle that you're going to be wearing. Mm -hmm. And and it, it, the guy trying to catch the fish reminds me of the guy telling you something that's not quite right. biblical. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We can't catch fish. Un, with, without the truth, right? Okay. And sometimes you get fish and you think that they're real, and you think that they're saved, but then they 
they lose right. th- that life. <laughs> but life came back when you put them back in the water. Right. Well, mm-hmm. the water rep- That's the part I thought was significant. It is very significant. Because yeah. mm-hmm. water represents the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It does, because yeah. it does in the Bible. Right, well, truth. Or truth. Like, right. And when you put the fish, and we know fish are new believers, people. Right. You know, God right. made us I, fishers I of men. I didn't think about that, but that's a symbol for Christians as fish. I never thought about yes. that until now. And so as you reach out and God made you these fishers of men, Mm -hmm. and your new ministry is for men, for widows, Mm -hmm. widowers, Mm -hmm. as you fish and you get them, because you're going to not just, it's more than a support group, you're going to talk the word with them, you're going to give them truth, you're going to talk Holy Spirit with them, Mm -hmm. you're going to bring life back to them. They look alive, but when you, right now, men who've lost their wives, whether it be last month or 10 years ago, They're not feeling very alive. Right, right. And okay. so they look alive until you get to talking to them and you realize they're just they're mm-hmm. lifeless, they're mm-hmm. flat, they're mm-hmm. a counterfeit. But once they get put back in the water of the Word and of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you're going to see them come back to life. Mm-hmm. And the fact that God used a nickname of yours yeah. to connect it, <laughs> yeah, it kind of confirms that it's you. I mean, he's calling right, you. That was the part of it, 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 cause when we pulled it and said, oh, it's a catfish. And I didn't think of that till later after I woke mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is real confirmation for what you're well, doing. Good. I'm glad I brought it. I saw you today. <laughs> and why don't you tell the viewers quickly what your ministry is that we're talking about? Because this it, is important. It's called the Missing Rib Ministry, which is a play on words where God took a rib from Adam and made Eve. And it's a ministry for widowers because I lost my wife five months ago. And several other friends did over the summer. So Mm -hmm. I felt called a couple of months ago after hearing a lady speak who has a widow's ministry. And God kind of pointed me out and said, and you need to start a a men's ministry. And bingo, here I am. That's awesome. (laughs) And what a confirmation. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful confirmation. I never even thought about that. I just thought it's a really strange dream. (laughs) It's all connected. Because as you get to working in this ministry, as you know, Doubt's going to come in, discour- mm-hmm. you know, discouragement, and mm-hmm. you can always go back to this dream and say, no, wait a minute. Right. He gave me a new robe, right. a new anointing. Mm-hmm. He's made me leadership. Mm-hmm. He showed me I'm going to be a fisher of men. These are men that you're ministering to mm-hmm. that look alive, but inside they're dead. Mm-hmm. But when I water them with the Word and the Holy Spirit and love, they're going to come back to life. Well, that's, that's really amazing, yeah. It I, is. I would never have made all those connections. It's just him. <laughs> Your spirit did. Right. But your mind doesn't. Mm. He spoke to your spirit. Right. And now that your, your brain has heard it, mm. now it can all come together. Thanks for watching, Dreamcatcher. I'm here with my friend, Barbie Taylor. I've only known her a short time, but we really hit it off. She's a sweet spirit. I know you're going to just really enjoy her. And she has some dreams for us today. Alrighty, you want yeah. me to start off the one I made a drawing of? Oh yes, tell about with that. This is great. This one is I had a dream about a man on a horse, but the image of the man and horse shone with sunlight, and it was right over the same spot that me and my son almost got into a wreck about two weeks earlier. And I'll show you the dream. I drew it. I draw from time to time. This is it. And so this is a, a dream. This is a. A road you live on and tell what happened in that dream. I was going up the road and there was a truck that I thought that he saw um, us coming down the hill. We have the right of way, they have a stop sign on both sides here and he kept pulling out and we were already, we were a matter of like a car and a half away from him. I had to slam the brakes on Mm. and I remember saying Jesus like that right there and I don't know, it was just amazing and I was praising his name all the way to town because it was that close. And this was a, it, you had the dream before this happened, right? You had a dream? After. You had a dream after. And so you, he showed you, explain the horse and what's on the horse. Oh, well, Miss Robbins, she told me when I saw her at Joseph's storehouse, I told her this dream because it really stood out to me that um, I told him told her that it was a, ho- a man on a horse and she told me it was Jesus. Yeah, and he was stopping, he was blocking that, was that car from, mm-hmm. from hitting you. <sighs> and, and you know, I mean, it happened first 
in the Bible and in, in life, a lot of times things will happen in the spirit realm as well as the physical realm. And so this happened in your physical realm first and you had fear, but then he showed you what really did happen, what, why that truck or that vehicle did stop. That's, That's amazing. Exciting. And explain why you're doing the pictures. I love this idea. <laughs> well, after I spoke with Robin that day, I um, thought that was a good idea. I'm going to start, yeah. when I remember my dreams, I'm going to write them down immediately where I won't forget them. Right. And then I'm going to draw them out. It's a wonderful idea. If you at home, if you can't draw, the Word tells us to write down the dream. I love Habakkuk 2 too. Write down the vision. Make it plain. Make it easy to understand. Write it down. And that way you don't remember it. But if you have the gift of drawing like you do, you can bring the Word and the picture as well. That's exciting. <laughs> That's real exciting. Now I think you've had some more that I, that I don't know about yet, right? Yes, I've had some other dreams, but I haven't drawn them. Okay. I've had dreams about my mom. She's been with our Lord since 2005, and she's smiling at me in each one. Mm -hmm. And you know she's with the Lord. Yes. She's letting you know. It's a lot of times, a lot of people have dreams of loved ones who've gone on before them. Now, you're pretty young, but once you get to a certain age, people are afraid that God is telling them that they're going to die. And, and He can't do that in a dream, but typically what He's doing really is to giving you comfort. If your mother and you, and obviously I could tell by the way your eyes sparkle when you <laughs> said that, your mother and you had a, a good relationship. And she's, he's allowing her in a dream for you to see her image in a dream and that she's okay and everything is okay. And you know that one day you will see her again. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> and sometimes those happen because you're going through something in your life um, that's stressful. You know, I know you have children and without your mama here, you know, you can't just run to mom and say, Mom, what do you do when your kids do this? And so he's allowing you to have that comfort that she would give you if she was here. And I do. Um, a lot of my uh, family members, they'll have um, moments that they're sad, but I'm happy because I know she's with the Lord and yes. she's not sick. She's yes. not in pain anymore. So yes. I have that comfort and yes. a lot of that comes from um, the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. I've got cold chills all over me right now. <laughs> so. Well, hey, that's when you have a dream. He's speaking to your spirit, and he's a spirit. And he's showing you the image of your mother, which brings up, you know, memories and, and good feelings. And that's what he's doing. He's bringing peace to your spirit. He's also bringing calm to your mind, you know, and the stress. And it just takes you, it takes you back to her for a while. That's nice. That's because he loves you. <laughs> That's nice. You got another one? I have a lot. I okay. used to have dreams about tornadoes a lot, mm -hmm. but I was never hurting any one of them. Well, tornadoes can be more than one thing. It's a very, very common dream. Tornadoes, think about what a tornado does. It, you know, things are spinning out of control. They're destructive. Um, when you are just going through life and you feel like you have no control and things are just going crazy, tornado dreams will happen, but you're always okay in them. So the Lord is showing you that in the midst of the storm that He's with you. And it's different than the mama dream. The mama dream is for you specifically in a specific time, a specific situation. The tornado is just life. and the storms of life, but He's with you there. I do remember that was during a time when it's before I knew the Lord completely, and I think that was in your pretty life symbolic. Was, yeah. yeah. You think about the tornado, what you know about one in real life, and you think about your life, and you're like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I feel like. Yeah. I used to think it was because I was always enthused by the power of them, mm. but I guess. Well, when you have a dream, um, analyze how you feel about it. Are you fearful? Are you just in awe? Are you, you know? It's a mixture. So it's important when you have a dream, analyze how you feel about it and what is, what are you thinking in the dream? You know, if you can, because it's hard sometimes to wake up and know that, but. I remember another one, now that you said that, mm -hmm. I remember I was getting other people to safety during that dream. I was telling them to get away from windows. We went into different buildings and, um, the were they area. listening or were they not? How were they, they reacting? Listening. Were they? Mm -hmm. That's good. A lot of people have dreams when no one's listening to them <laughs> when they're doing that, which means you don't feel like anyone hears you and that you're seeing the danger and they're not listening. But in your dream, that's showing you that you 
that you have a voice that they hear and that when you're talking to people and you're warning them of whether it's situations in life or you're wanting them spiritually or your children you know that they hear your voice and they will heed so that's that's, that's nice that is nice <laughs> that is nice okay had a dream not too long ago that I was blowing bubbles out of my mouth and they were very pretty there was no bubble wand or anything this was very strange to me but um, the the dream they're very colorful and I remember popping a few of them I don't know what this means <laughs> that's it uh -huh. how did you feel I, I see you smiling as you tell it that. was enthusing mm -hmm. it was different I was like this it's is kind of light it's kind of airy it's kind of uh, fun it's um, it's a childlike you know a bubble wand would be a childlike thing the word tells us that our wor our words have life and death in them but he's showing you that your words are they float on air, they, they take a life of their own. They're very colorful, they're very childlike, which is a good thing, not childish, but childlike. Um, and they're not threatening, no one's afraid of bubbles. They're not threatening, they, um, they float until, and then when they, they reach someone and then they, you know, when a bubble hits you, it splashes on you, those words get on them and, and it's not a threatening way. So that goes with, if you think about it, your tornado dream, where you're telling people to get out of the way and they listen. God is showing you that your voice, though we know it has life and death and we know it has power, yours is in a way of, it's non-threatening. It's very, it's gentle, it floats on air. You know? Wow. Um, and so that's, he's showing you one of the gifts that you have on how for you to reach people is with, it's that personality, that sweet, that air, that light, you know. You can say things that's not gonna offend them and push them away and that's nice that is very nice because a lot of Christians do the opposite with the words you know they mean well but the words hit them like a brick where well, yours I do tend air. to slow down before I say things um, sometimes I'm not mm -hmm. but more so than not yeah well he's showing you that it's effective and think of the colors and because every color has a meaning the blues are revelation the purples are royalty so the colors of your rainbows that's in a that's in a bubble that when as you speak those words and those anointings over people and then it pops on them and it stays with them and it doesn't hurt them it doesn't hurt anyone that's that's beautiful i've never heard a dream like thank that. you i, I thought that. that was very odd <laughs> i loved it it's nice. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to be right back with more right after this. Thank you. Are you looking for a speaker for your next retreat or event? Robin's transparent style comforts and soothes during personal ministry and dream interpretation. Right now, this lady right here walks deeply with God. She's full of the Holy Spirit and she has studied the Word and her gift is the real deal. She has encouraged thousands around the globe by helping them find peace through understanding. I'm here with my friend Barbie Taylor and she has some more dreams she's going to share with us. Honey, I had a dream about flying oh. and there I was over a really big lake or a river and there was a cliff in the distance with lots of trees behind it. Are you flying your, your body or are you in a plane? Body. I love flying dreams. <laughs> I remember telling you this at Joseph's Storehouse one day. Flying is almost always a sign of a prophetic gift because you're flying, you're soaring, you're going higher, you're getting closer to God. It's promotion, it's weightlessness, nothing can affect you. Um, you're above your circumstances. In your case, you're above the water, which is the Holy Spirit, but He's the wind beneath your wings. Oh, you. Um, you know, there's no, there is a cliff that if you were on the ground, there's always the fear of falling off a cliff. You're above it all. And every person, I would say, or at least 99.9 .9 of the people that I have interpreted dreams for who fly, tell me that they, they almost felt like it wasn't a dream. They felt like they were flying. I mean, the sensation of it is I was there. And almost inevitably, these people learn, whether they know it at the time or not, they learn that they have some type of a little special spiritual gift. We all have spiritual gifts, but typically they are dreamers, which you obviously are. 
uh, which is very prophetic or they have words of knowledge for people or words of wisdom. It's a, it's a sign of truly a spiritual gift. Wow. Yeah, it's very exciting. It is. I'm glad to hear that. I know um, since I've, shortly probably after this dream, that my journey with God completely has started. Um, well, he, he was showing you. He was showing you that you were lifting off. You had been on the ground walking and you know but he raised you he lifted you and and you know you know the difference in how you were even as a believer prior to yeah, now most definitely complete circle well that was what that dream was showing many times it's a it's the um the launching the the here's the next level you've been here and now here's your next level and so that's what you're it's like i'm going to be soaring yes and you are. That is neat. It <laughs> is neat. <laughs> yeah. I had a dream so probably about a week ago that a man named Aaron walked up to me, introduced himself, and I don't know any Aaron's in real life. I don't know if this is a person I'm going to meet. I don't know what that means. So. <laughs> and that was it? Um, I was with my friend, okay. and we were sitting somewhere. I don't know if we were eating or just sitting somewhere at church. But... Um, he walked up to me and he was talking to me, I could tell in the dream. And he introduced himself, told me that he was a nice guy and just gave him characteristics of himself. And that's all I ever really remember. Mm. Well, Aaron was a supporter of Moses. Mm -hmm. He helped hold Moses' hands, you know, when he was praying. He was, he was a, a man of God. He was a, when you think of Aaron, you think of a supporter, someone who's going to support you, someone who's going to be there with you. And now, my job is to tell you what the symbols mean. My job is not to tell you who he right. is in real life. He may not be named Aaron. He may be. But when you have a dream about a name, a person with a name, what does that name mean? What is it? And this is a biblical name. So who was he in the Bible? He was, he was a supporter, um, an encourager. You know, he helped Moses. Um, so God is going to send you someone He's going to be probably a man, since this was a man, um, that will come beside you, that will lift your arms, that will help you. It may be a, a dear friend. It may be uh, a family member. It may be a life mate. But it's going to be someone that is of good character, because you, you heard that in the dream. And it's someone who's going to help you. It's a helpmate. And when you feel like with Moses, I just can't do it anymore, he's going to be there to raise your hands and, and I was thinking about the them. Aaron and the Bible earlier. Mm -hmm. so it's very good. Well remember when the when his when Moses' hands fell, he was losing the battle and when his hands were lifted, he began to win the battle. This person is going to come and help you lift your arms to win the battle. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's good. That's a promise you can say, God, remember, <laughs> remember you promised, because that's a promise. He's whispering in your ear. That is so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that is. Then I have one last dream. Okay. I had it when I was elementary school age. Okay. Um, and I remember it vividly because it was very repetitive for a long time. I don't know how, it, how long exactly, but it was with axes flying and with the letters of the alphabet and numbers. I don't know what what caused me to have that dream. Axes and axes. Axes, yes, flying cutting axes, the and and the letters in the alphabet are flying and numbers. Well. And numbers. Mm -hmm. um, when I tell people the interpretation of dreams, typically, I feel like people could interpret their own. But then there come those dreams like this that truly only the Holy Spirit can do, and what He's showing you is curses that have been spoken over you since then, since childhood. Um, in the air, they were spoken. They were, um, they could have been performed against you. They could have been, um, it, it represents abuse. It represents, you know, the acts is hurtful, harmful. It could be physical abuse. It could be the, the alphabet. It could be verbal abuse. I was um, bullied a lot in school. That may be some of that. It, it very well is. In pain, hurt, uh, the numbers are 
um, when you you keep count, even though you know you don't mean to, but you're you could pro and I don't expect you to, but you could probably go back and remember the major ones, mm -hmm. and you could count them. Well, there was this one, and I was in fifth grade, and then in fourth grade, and then in, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I know that you've had some some issues um, in life with some depression, I and mean, you've shared that before. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said this. But um, I'm, no wonder, you know. I mean, look back at this is what it's showing you, and it's from this. And now you have your new creature. So all that bullying, all those words, all those lies, all those axes meant to cut down a tree. A tree is life. And those axes were meant to cut the life out of you, to cut it down. And, but look where you are. Look where you are. So far. So it seems just distant memories mm -hmm. now. Doesn't seem like the same person, does it? No. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and it repeated for a long time. It repeated because you were still going through it. It was still happening and the devil was bringing it back to mind. You couldn't get past it because it wasn't like, oh, that happened back then. That was happening and happening and happening. Yeah. And it weren't, they weren't paper cuts. They weren't knives. They were axes. These were big abuses. These were big hurts. These were painful words that you seem like everywhere you turn, they were just oh, yeah. coming <laughs> at you. That's and, and no control. I mean, you, how can you stop an axe flying through the air? You right. Know, you felt totally no, rec no way of stopping it, no control. But that's gone. It is. That's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and baby, look at you now, as they say. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm glad that dream is gone and, and that's behind you. I don't mean to go into a counseling session, but make sure that you have forgiven those people. Oh, uh, for you. I have. Okay, because for you, for your sake. And that's probably why the, the axes and stuff, the dream has stopped happening. That gives you a great peace. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stick around. It's physically exhausting. It's emotionally and spiritually exhausting, but it, I love it. Robin's transparent style comforts and soothes during personal ministry. So I know your Good. interpretation is right on. You, you brought it out mm -hmm. for me to see. You hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> you know what I That's mean? That's good. That's good. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. It was amazing. I loved it. Thank you. To schedule Robin, visit www.eechoes.com. We're out of time, but next week you will want to watch Dreamcatcher. I'm going into the home of Bishop Belita McMurray Fight. She's been dreaming and interpreting dreams, not of her own, but for other people for many years. You'll really want to hear her story. And then I go back to Teleco Plains, where Dreamcatcher shares a dream, where she's helping someone and she's abundantly rewarded. God wants to speak to you as well in your dreams.